Hi, welcome to In The Workshop. Today we're going to look at the Draper Mini Wood Lathe. So you don't need to see me take it out of the box. I think everybody can unpack a box. The reason why I'm getting it is because I have a Clark, a cheap budget Clark uh, wood lathe that's bigger, but it's uh, very shaky and uh, not very good. I wanted something a bit more solid. So this is smaller, but it's really rigid because this is solid cast iron, this. Uh, the bed on here you will find these this is badged up as draper but you'll find loads of these on the internet and they're all just badged up with different uh, like distributors but they're all the same and they're all priced around around the 200 pounds mark so I'll bring you in close and uh, we'll take a closer look at it and then we'll test it out a little bit later Okay, so when you take it out of the box, the only things you've got to do is you've got to fit these handles on, the two handles. Just put this, uh, these two screws in as well. So these handles just come with a spring and a uh, bolt that goes in there. Just put the spring in, put the bolt through, and so that's on a spring there. So obviously when you press it, you can turn it to unlock it to, uh, or to lock it up. And when you let go, it just hangs loose like that. These are made out of uh, cast alloy by the looks of it. I think on the early ones of these, they used to have plastic ones of these. But I'm not 100% sure about that. But these are metal, which are good. I think on the early ones of these, the adjustment knob here used to be made of plastic as well. And this is uh, metal, cast metal, which is good. I think now they've changed to uh, complete metal. So all of this is metal. The only plastic bit on it is the switches and the knob and that just cover there. But everything else is really good and solid. Now these are the tool rests you get, you get that because what they've done, they've changed what you get in the pack. So on the earlier ones, you just got one tool rest, but now you get two tool rests. So these are only, let me have a look, just to remember the length. So that's a 172 millimeter tool rest. And then you get a 110 millimeter tool rest in there. So as well as the tool rests, you also get a drive spur. These are MT1, so a Morse Taper 1 size for going in here. So you've got that one and you've got your bearing tail spur there. So that's good because it's got bearing on it obviously it's the MT1 as well you also get push rod for knocking them out at the end knocking both these out so you can take them out and also it fits in here on your drive for fitting your face plates which you get so you get two face plates, so that's 144 millimeter face plate, and you get a 52 millimeter face plate. So when you thread them on, you can use your bar just to hold it to do it up. You also have the flaps on the face plate that your spanner will fit as well, that comes with it as well. You also get a couple of Allen keys. On here, on the tail stop, you've obviously got the locking. You've got the locking lever there that works the same as your uh, your tool rest one. 
and this is the adjustment knob so undo that and you've got your adjustment there screw in and out the distance between centers uh, is 300 millimeters max so that's your turn in length capacity and the capacity for turn in on the end here on face plates etc is 200 millimeters so the thread size on here is uh, 3 quarter by 16 tpi so threads per inch which is the same as my cheap budget Clark one that's got the same that's got 3 quarter by 16 tpi so it means that this chuck from off my Clark will also fit on here the trouble is this is really heavy this chuck so I could use it at a push but I won't want to have it on here for long because it's really really weighty what I've done for this one I've also bought in a chuck so I've got a little drill chuck here MT1 so I can fit it in there but I can also my idea also is to put it in there so I can do pen turning so I can hold my uh, mandrel in in the chuck there that's the plan with that but of course I've also got it so that I can uh, put it in the tail stock and use it for drilling into my workpiece there so that's a extra that I've got off the internet so I didn't get that it's nothing to do with Draper I just found one an MT1 and uh, so I think what was that that was about 14 pounds I think but that's handy so you might want to think about getting something like that and also you might be able to get a hold of a little chuck to go on there that'd be handy but yeah this is unbelievably solid but we'll find out how good it is when we give it a test so on here this motor is a 250 watt motor so it's not that massive but it is a quiet induction motor so what they recommend with this is if you're turning really big heavy stuff you know like maximum weight or diameter on there that to only run it for about 20 minutes and then uh, give it a rest for 20 minutes just to let it cool down a bit which is a bit of a pain but like me and like a lot of other people they would have a mini lathe just to do small work so it has got variable speed here and spindle speed here is 750 to 3200 revs per minute so i've got it turned down there let's switch it on and it's nice and quiet And that's at full speed and it's still quiet and it's staying still and stable obviously we'll find out when we put some material in if it still stays nice and stable when it's on the bench so the motor does have brushes and you'd need to check them about every 80 hours of use so all you do there's a brush either side just get a flat screwdriver and undo them and take out and check the carbon brushes so that's something that needs checking that you need to keep an eye on right, in the manual it's got an arrow going to here with an overload reset switch but there's no overload reset switch on this so I don't know why they've taken that away but I have noticed here there is some uh, fixing points some threaded fixing points two at the headstock end and then just one at the tailstock in there so it is possible to fix it down so 
there's the drive belt under there that goes up to the uh, goes from the motor up to the headstock and these are the justin bolts there there's one either side just a hexagon adjusting bolt so you can slide this down on the uh, move the slot to tighten the belt up but because it's variable speed you haven't got any of the mucking about with the belt so you can just leave that and just turn your knob on there to change the speed so there is a fuse in there But look, as you can see, full load, 20 minutes, cool down time, 20 minutes. it's time to get this over at the bench and we'll give it a bit of a test and see how she goes this is a piece of cherry plum right let's see how we get on So yeah, that's doing a lovely job. Nice. Right, this is some maple on the uh, smallest faceplate. Let's have a go with that. Yes, working lovely. That's great. Overall, I'm really impressed with how quiet it is and how stable it is.
especially compared to my Clark one that's all wobbly and noisy. It's really quite nice to use. Um, I did notice down here, let me show you. I'll just take you off here. So when you're uh, working on the lathe, you'll want to keep an eye on this lot because the lathe's positioned underneath underneath there look it's taking in it's like uh, getting shavings on the end of the motor there so you'll want to keep clearing that now and again so my thoughts on this machine i think it's a great little tool the uh, only improvements that could be made to this i think is a slightly bigger motor and just getting a bit longer tool rest Apart from that, I think it's great. It's nice and heavy and quiet, and it's lovely to use. So if uh, this keeps running, it'll be a lovely machine. So you do get a warranty, so it's two years on parts and one year on labour. So we'll see how she goes. But at the minute, she's lovely to use. So anyway, I hope this video was of use to you if you're looking at... Uh, little mini lathe and if you like the video if you give us a thumbs up that'd be brilliant and if you haven't already subscribed please consider subscribing it'd be great to have you follow along all there is to say is take care and i'll see you next time in the workshop